know, right? Did tell, Holly tell you if you're on TV or something that you can run off your suits? Does this count? All right, good morning. Uh, I love the simulcast deal because uh, it makes for a little extra room in here. We got about 200 people watching. I know this. Every office in JPAR is, uh, is getting together and doing it. So the great thing about you guys coming here is you get to see Haas and you get to intertwine with some of our agents. And, and then I guess you get free lunch from uh, our lunch sponsor. I uh, wanted to introduce one of our latest uh, lender teams that has just joined us. Tristan, if you want to come up here for a second. Our Frisco office, as you all know, every office has a different lending partner. Uh, we've known Tristan for a while. He was with another one lending partners and just uh, recently made a switch. And yeah. uh, he's one of our preferred lenders in, in, uh, in Frisco now. I want to let all, everybody that's in a Frisco office is partnering with them. I'm going to let them tell you guys a little bit about it, and then we'll get the meeting going. I don't want to take up much time. Uh, we are, as like Tristan said, we just moved into this space next door. We're really looking forward to the partnership and the relationship with you guys. Oops. Um, we are just quick about Great Western. We are family-owned uh, mortgage bank. Uh, corporate offices right here in Plano, Texas, started in 1981. So we're kind of that uh, perfect size, I think. We're small enough to make those business decisions and big enough to be able to do whatever we need to. So uh, it's a great deal. We're looking forward to kind of helping you guys grow your business. Uh, as you go through these presentations, kind of ask yourself, you know, are you in a good lender relationship? Are you in an abusive lender relationship? Do you need a support group? We can offer you that. We offer close on time therapy, so that's always a great thing to have as well. So uh, we do, uh, I know that uh, we're just kind of doing the introduction today, but we really look forward to getting to know all of you. Sam uh, Andrews is uh, our only LO that could make it, so uh, stand up Sam. So I, I have to leave a little bit early, I have a, a previous engagement, but Sam will be here for a little bit. Uh, if you guys need cards or information, give them from JP, and uh, we look forward to it, thanks. So we obviously don't do business with everybody. Tristan and Great Western is vetted. They're next door, literally next door to our Frisco office. So stop by, say hello, any lending, lending questions. Uh, really, the key to success is being be able to build your power team. If you don't have a preferred lender, if you don't have somebody that you trust, my recommendation is, is go see them. Uh, they're right above Jake's where our office is. So in Frisco, right across from Frisco Square. Super cool guy, super nice guy. Uh, I know uh, the whole team there. Uh, they like to party. They uh, they like to give back. What was the? I missed the pig roast that was just uh, here recently. So, yeah, good times. <laughs> yeah, good times. And closing loans on time. So, right. Spe speaking about alcohol, the the person, the person I'm going to introduce you next is going to take uh, a good good bit of your time. I uh, just had recently had dinner at, uh, at Fleming's, a lunch with him at Fleming's, and uh, he spilled uh, red wine all over my <laughs> new white shirt that I just had made, and I forgave him for that. But it all came out, so we have, we have something, a story to tell for the you. ages. Yes, no, but I'm going to blame him because it was the waiter so fascinated by Haas and finally got to meet a celebrity <laughs> that spilled wine all over me. So Haas is a celebrity. Haas, come up here. Uh, he travels all over the, the United States. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, he travels all over the United States. Renee just told me that we want to bring in somebody else, but I want to introduce Haas because I also have to leave a little bit early and we got to go across town. But uh, uh, trains thousands and thousands of agents. Very, very fortunate now to have him uh, on the training team, on, on uh, really on staff at JPAR. Uh, Shannon Ashkenos uh, and him have been working together to build a, a curriculum that's going to go nationwide for us. When I first heard of Haas, I was uh, calling expires and FISBOs and uh, I had I bought this Red X system, and I was still in the Carolinas. And uh, now it's kind of funny, ironic that you know he's sitting next to me. But uh, you know, if you want to know what it takes to to make it, just about everything. And I think Haas has done it. He was an agent. He's done really well at it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let him give you guys a quick uh, couple of uh, minutes intro. Then I do know we want to do City House. Uh, they're here, our, our charity that uh, uh, is really close to our heart. That's uh, probably the charity that we're most involved with. Uh, but uh, without any further ado, we do have a, a PAC meeting, Haas, in a couple of minutes, and then we'll, you can have the floor right after that, right after City House. Yeah, and I'll, I'll make it really quick, you guys, before, I, be before I get started. We all, I will have today's Top Producing Mindset. We're going to have just two different parts. I've got a ton to cover, so I'm going to let um, the introduction happen, then I'm going to get started. Um, just be sure, you know, you know, for over the next couple hours, it's going to be like drinking from a fire hydrant. Can you guys hang with me? Yes? All right, because I because today's all about mindset. I'm going to show you guys how to change your thinking. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm passing this mic like this. This is great. I'm like, 
Stop it. We need more than one, right? We need more than one. Thank you. No sound. Uh oh. Is this on? Um, this has power. I'm going to hand it off so you can figure it out. <laughs> Sign language, yeah. Hello. I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's it's showing that everything's working here. Okay, maybe it's on their end. Anyway, good morning for those of you who don't know me. I'm Renee Sinclair. I'm the Director of Business Development as well as the Director of Philanthropy. So uh, just a couple quick things this morning. I want to introduce our coffee, juice, and breakfast sponsor, Miss Nikki Hunt with Ideal Floors. She's going to come up and tell you a minute about Ideal Floors. And then also the most amazing Lisa Rogers is here from City House. Uh, we are so blessed to be a part of City House and to give back to them, not only through your CDAs, but through our Christmas party that's coming up. So Lisa's going to speak a little bit about City House, um, and then at the end of the meeting we'll talk a little bit more about the Christmas party. So Nikki, if you want to come up and give us a few, a uh, little bit about Ideal Floors, our preferred floor vendor. Haas is the superstar. I'm, a, I'm the flooring expert. Right? Uh, my name is Nikki Hunt from Ideal Floors. And for those of you who do not know, um, Ideal Floors is also a family owned company. We've been in the Metroplex over 28 years. We've got uh, five locations. So I'm in the Garland office, but we have one close to you guys um, Plano on Parker and Custer. So we've got Garland, Plano, Duncanville, North Richmond Hills, and Fort Worth. So we cover the entire Metroplex. I've been somewhere called Trinidad, Texas. Have y'all been there before? Yeah, it's far. So we cover the whole, it's down by Cedar Creek Lake. We cover the whole Metroplex. We have all kinds of flooring. The only flooring we don't do is stained concrete. So everything that goes on the floor we have. So wood, carpet, tile, vinyl, laminate, everything. Our prices are extremely competitive. We deal with a lot of investors and contractors and people like that. So you know those guys will shop you if you've dealt with them. Um, we do have a pay close program for your sellers. It's up to 13 months. It's a big deal for a lot of agents. They just put them on the program. It is with approved financing, but it's super easy to get approved. So they need to list first and get the ugly carpet out, the green or blue or burgundy out. Then they'll just give us a call and we'll work it out for them. Um, we do have a charity because I know charity is a big thing for you guys. It's called Ideal Gives Back, and we give away 10 houses of flooring every month to people that can't afford to fix their floors. So we do um, low-income pe people on fixed income, single moms, veterans, uh, people that just want to stay in their house but they can't afford to fix their floors. So we do that every month. For we try to do 10 houses, and it, sometimes we just can't get the word out. So if you know of anybody that is in need or if you're in, in uh, involved in an organization that helps people like that, please let us know. You, they can go on our website and it's idealfloors.com slash gives back. Yes, we do. Our new, our newest thing, we're doing granite and it's super competitive. Um, our pricing is really good on our granite um, now. And so we have a whole new department that does, does granite and it's been working out for us. So if you guys have any flooring questions, remember my face. I'm your flooring go-to. And, and I'll say this about Ideal Floors. We're using them on the flips that we're doing. Uh, we shopped around, and incredibly, they've beat everybody else, and they're super responsive. Uh, being able to just call uh, the owner or call Nikki and get uh, the best quote right away, uh, reliable. When they say they're going to do something, they do something. So, Holly, thank you for taking care of it. They uh, we have uh, flip with the purpose. We, we're buying properties and giving ten percent back to charity. You know they give us the best deal so that we can maximize profit for the for the charity. So thanks a lot, Kevin. Kevin's been great. So uh, before I uh, another audible here before uh, City House takes stage, I wanted to make an announcement. And sorry, Renee, I've got to leave about eleven. So um, I want I want to give out these hats to 
the first people at the end of the meeting that will go to the uh, link that Renee sent out yesterday uh, with the uh, donation for the Christmas party on December 4th. So if you make a donation, let's say you have at least 50 bucks, okay, to the website that Renee has, she'll share it with you guys. Uh, it was shared last night. You can go on Facebook. Renee, if you don't mind posting that on, on uh, the Facebook, our Facebook page. I don't know how many I have here. I just grabbed a few out of the box. Uh, but uh, make at least a $50 donation to the link, and you can grab one of these hats. Uh, the cool thing about it is it has our new logo, which uh, has been trademarked, okay? And there is meaning behind the, the logo, and I'm going to go a little bit in detail here. Of course, the classic JPAR logo, the JP initials. Uh, there's a bar, and you can notice everything is above the bar, which is pretty much how we do everything around here, okay? The meaning to it is we don't like average. We're at war with average. Um, we don't have anything about average about our company. So I want to continue to make sure that we stand above the bar. The next one is a house, but of course it's an arrow pointing upward, meaning we're always growing, we're always getting better, we're always looking for better to improve our company, improve your businesses, okay? And finally is, of course, the R logo, which is everyone in our company will go by the Code of Ethics of the National Association of Realtors. Therefore, you are a realtor. In this market, you have to be a realtor, but in some certain markets, you don't have to, okay? Every market that we go into will require our agents to be members of the National Association of Realtors. Uh, I've been involved, as you go across the United States, you'll see that you'll just meet real estate agents and not realtors, okay? Uh, there's the logo in the, uh, the URL in the back. This is a cool little touch. The clasp is, uh, is a JPAR, JP hat, uh, JP. And then uh, on the side, most importantly, is the 1B16. I looked at it last night. It uh, looks like we're going to make it by December. Very, very good goosebumps when I think about it because, you know, if I'm, I'm obsessed with numbers. I look at it just about every day. So uh, if things go the way they're going and, uh, and even staying the way they're staying, we're going to make it and we're going to celebrate. And when we celebrate, uh, I'm gonna, in about a month or two months, we'll probably go on until January, everybody will receive one of these hats. Okay. And the announcement that I wanted to make is we're changing the commission structure, okay? Ye everyone within our company will now cap. Get it? Cap, you cap, okay? We're clever like that. Um, <laughs> this transaction fee will remain the same. It's 475 But as you know, the only way you can cap now is if you get on the top producer plan, okay? Things are going great. The company is doing amazingly well. Uh, we've reached a billion dollars. It's all thanks to you. So my way to thanking you guys and continue to give back to the agents is everybody will cap starting January 1st, okay? The cap is 28 transactions, okay, which is 13,300. So those of you that uh, a good bit of our percent of our company will cap, you look at everybody in Champions League, they've all capped. There's absolutely no fee. There's no monthly fee. Right now for you to cap, there's $100 a month uh, support and services fee. We've got rid of that. We don't want to chase $100 a month. So it's 28 transactions for individuals. Here's the other cool thing. As you build a team, there is a team structure that also allows you to cap. Uh, Wes, what's our uh, minimum requirement for transactions now? Six. Six, okay. So what we've done is if you build a team, every additional team member that you have has to generate six transactions and add six transactions to your cap, okay? So if you have a team of two, 28 plus six, that's 34 transactions, and then the team caps. Okay, uh, we don't prorate it. It starts January 1st. Everybody's going to be on that. Teams of larger than four require approval from management. Uh, but obviously, the team leader, everything goes under the team leader. The team leader has to receive a percentage of the commission split. Otherwise, it's not a team, right? Otherwise, it's just a bunch of people trying to cap under somebody's name. Uh, and believe it or not, that's happened. Uh, so everybody's always trying to find a way, an angle. But so congratulations, everybody as of January 1st for 2017 will have a cap. Right now you don't, so pretty excited about it. Thank you. And uh, that's just a way for us to continue to change and, and make things better. So uh, the teams, the top producers, it saves them some money, and you guys that are, that are agents that uh, really want to strive to be the top and the best of the best and not be average, you have something to really strive, okay? Uh, I think I'm done. I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Lisa. Okay, I'm going to talk really, really fast because I have a 10.30 appointment. So, first of all, thank you guys for letting me come this morning. And um, most importantly, thank you guys for your support for City House. Um, I think we're going on five years, 
four years. This is the fourth one. So um, for those of you who don't know what City House is, uh, City House is a shelter in here in Collin County. We're the only shelter for kids only that are here. Um, we've been here for 28 years in Plano, and we serve kids from the age of newborn all the way up to age 22. So um, we have four homes, one in Frisco, two transitional living programs in Plano, and then our emergency shelter also in Plano. Um, we do everything from short-term emergency care all the way up to transitional living, which is um, teaching those kids how to live independently, uh, not to live off of the system, but to learn to live in the community and to be partners in the community. So uh, you guys have come alongside us, like I said, for four years now, and various ways. Uh, you guys give us money. We get checks every quarter. A uh, nice little stack that has continued to grow, and that helps put food on the table for these kids and lights on and, um, you know, helps us make sure that we're taking care of them. All of our kids go to school. It is required uh, that they do that, up at least through the high school age. And then our transitional living program kids, they do have to at least work, and we do strongly encourage them to continue their education in school. Um, we have a couple of scholarship recipients from you all that have – uh, gone on. We have one young man that is currently enrolled in uh, a university. So he was, when he got the scholarship initially from you guys, he was at Collin. And now he is in a, a full fledged university and living on campus. And uh, that's all part of the scholarship money that you guys do. So that's a huge thank you. And then I'm also working with Renee on the Christmas wish list. Uh, you guys can imagine what the holidays are like. Uh, they're s crazy enough for all of us, but being a imagine being a five-year-old pulled out of your home because your parents can't take care of you in one way or another. And um, then to have to spend the holidays um, in a shelter. So you guys provide them a Christmas. Uh, honestly, a lot of times it's a Christmas better than they get at home. And so um, we just really thank you for, for making that difference. We get to then take the gifts home have them out for them at the shelter, and they get to have a so-called normal Christmas morning where they get to open those and tear into them. And 15 of them opening gifts at one time. If you'd like to experience that sometime, come through volunteer orientation and come out and help us. So we appreciate you all very, very much. So, um, And we'll look forward to hopefully, are you all coming to the Christmas party? Yes. yes. So I will see you hopefully there, and thanks again. Hey, hey, Renee, on the on the scholarship, uh, you know, we've never really given it to recurring uh, students, but now that we have people that are in school, I think this should be able to apply to kids that are already in school. Okay, great, good. Uh, Renee's going to give you guys more details on the December 4th party, but it's uh, here in main event in Frisco. All right, uh, ready for Haas? You ready, Haas? Ready, All right, man. All yours. All right, cool. Hello, everybody. How are we feeling today? Entertain me while I put my mic on. He's got a good joke. Wes, he's a, uh, I know you're the funny guy. Come on. <laughs> really? You're on the spot, right? What am I wearing under my hood? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Very clever. I like it. We can beat that. All right, you guys, today here's what we're going to cover. I want to first off uh, thank everybody for joining us, both virtually and everybody here that's live today. Um, you know, over, we've got, I've been working with Shannon on some uh, of you guys' training on what we're going to, uh, on, on exactly what we're going to do for you guys. And let me tell you something, the training that we're putting together, the value that, that this company wants to provide each and every one of you guys is second to none. And there's a lot to be excited about. I can't wait till we can let the cat out of the bag and share with you guys what, uh, what we're doing to help you guys grow your business. And here's why this is important, because we're in a new era of real estate. Um, I believe we're in a new era. Are we in a new era? Yes. So it, what we've got to do is we've got to do things different today than we've ever done in the history of real estate. And that's what you know, they brought me on to help, help identify ways to position you guys as the experts, but help you separate yourself from everybody else, help you become better marketers in the new era, help you get better conversion in the new era, and they said, well, where do we start? I said, well, you got to start with mindset. Mindset 
today is the foundation of everything that we're going to teach. And we could teach you marketing and conversion, and we could teach you all that until we're blue in the face, but unless we have you thinking the right way, we're not truly going to help you get the exponential results that we seek for all of you guys. And that's what I've learned. It's through changing the way that we think. Is mindset an important part of success? You know, uh, yesterday, uh, 15 years ago yesterday, um, I, I was 20 years old. I barely made it through high school. I wasn't going to college. I decided not to go to college because I was running a landscape company at the time. But I had a mentor who took me under his wing. He goes, Hoss, you got to move. And I was living in northwest Missouri at the time. I uh, grew up working on a dairy farm. And he goes, you got to move. I said, where do I move? He goes, move to Dallas, Texas. I said, why do I move to Dallas? He says, you belong there. And so I go, okay. So I sold my real estate business uh, or my uh, landscape business to my brother. It's still in business today. Um, it's one of the top landscape companies in the Midwest. And I moved to Dallas 15 years ago today. And, y and I look at what's happened in the last 15 years from the moment that I took that action to pack up my F-350 truck and leave at 2.30 in the morning to move to Dallas and market right, know anybody to get in real estate. It's pretty crazy. I look back. But then I look at you know, what, what's happened since then. Um, and I'll show you a picture. This is my family. I look at my, my wife and my kids. And I think, what's the purpose of that guy coming into my life? He's dead now, but speaking to me to where getting me, me in real estate. And so much of that, my whole experience, I just, I have to have tremendous faith and tremendous, and my mindset has to be, has consistently had to evolve and change on this journey. I mean, today I'm teaching you guys, but I barely made it through high school. And what I've learned is, is the way that you think is going to determine your level of success. I've coached 5,500 hours of coaching agents all over the country. I've done 1,000 seminars in 48 states, over 1,300 one-on-one -on -one hours. I've seen people go from a brand-new agent to building a $50 million company in two years. I've seen the agent that, that got in, was ambitious, and was going to take over the world, and a year later they're gone working for somebody else out of the business. I've seen these, and, I, and, and, and my purpose for why I exist is to help you guys change your thinking to get different results, and that's what today's all about. How do we change your thinking? I'll tell you this, my, che my thinking changed right here. This is my uh, family in Missouri, my Pratt family. Out of my, out of these, see there's some uncles sprinkled in there. But my, brother, my dad had seven brothers. And the, my family grew up in the middle of nowhere in Iowa. These guys are like farm boys. And they grew up in Iowa. And six of the seven, one went to college, but the rest didn't. Today, six out of the seven are self-made millionaires. I watched one uncle build a, a, a trucking company from nothing. The guy couldn't even read and started his own trucking company. Today he's a multimillionaire many times over. I have another attorney, or another uncle who's an attorney, who's one of the top attorneys in the country, um, trial attorneys in the country. Another uncle started a farm and ranch store and built it up, which is Orschland's today. And I talked to another guy, built a one of my uncles built a computer company before computers were even on the radar. And I've seen all my uncles be successful, and here's what I've learned. And I see people like JP who, you know, come here to this country and can, doesn't even speak English and, and, and builds this today. Here's what I want you guys to know is this, is from testimonials and personal experience, we have enough information to conclude that it is possible to design and live an extraordinary life. Every reason that you guys got in this business can happen. Understand that what you aspire and what you want to achieve is 100% doable, obtainable, and you can make it happen. It's only going to happen, though, if you think the right way. But it's first, we got to know that it can happen. Can it happen? Yeah. Who's it up to? Yeah. Exactly. That's the first step, is understand that this can happen. And most of you guys are in this business. You got in this business because you have a desire. You have a desire for a different result. You got in real estate. Everybody told you that you were crazy. You left the security of a full-time job. You get into a business where you got to own your own company and, design, and do your own lead generation and convert prospects and, you know, and, and unemployed every 90 days. And we have to implement all these systems because you have desire. You miss that. <laughs> See, Siri has desire. So he, the desire is the reason that I left a place where I didn't know, where, where I was already successful at a young age, my, I, I was done, I, I, I mean the b company's still in business today, to packing up, leaving everything and moving to Dallas. Why? Because of the desire. So all of us have desire, but here's the thing, is 
desire is the beginning of the journey, right? We all have potential. It's up to you to turn the potential that you have into a skill. And that's what I want to do over the next, over our time together, not only today, but just in working with you guys, is to help you cultivate the potential that each and every one of you have into skills uh, and, and, and that are an asset that ensure that you're successful for years to come. Not, not teach you a couple things where you're successful for 12 months and then you, you're like a rubber band and snap back to mediocrity. I want you to grow every single year. And how do we do that? Well, you got to understand these facts. Here's the facts. 95%. If you have, let's, if you have 100 agents, psh, host, follow these 100 agents. It's your job to, you know, to, to coach them, make them successful. Look, here's what you're going to have. This is just numbers. You're going to have 95% of the 100 are, are going to do the same of business, the same of business or less. They're, they're not going to grow. They're just going to do maybe do a couple more, but they're not going to grow much. You have 4% of the people that will have incremental increases, 4%. Now, this is the 5% right here because the 1% had ex exponential increases. Kevin, we started selling real estate together, right? Remember I was single. I told you I wasn't ever getting married. Remember that? I was going to be single forever and sell real estate. That didn't work out that well, right? But ended up, you know, now I have family and kids and everything else, right? But I grew quickly, didn't I? Like fast. You remember from going from no listings to 30 listings. Why? Well, I, I, had, one ex I had this type of growth. And that's what my goal is to have all you guys is I want you here in this top 5%. You know, you don't have to take 30 listings in 30 days, but I want you to have incremental increases. I want your income to always be going up. I want you to always be doing better. But we don't want to be the 95%. 95% is when this business gets hard. It's when this business is, is running you ragged. It's when it, it has anxiety and uncertainty of the future. We want to be in that top 5%. Y'all with me? That's where the freedom that you guys all got in this business rests in. It's in that top 5%. It's where we can gain leverage. It's where we can have the business. We have systems. Because if we're in the 95%, it's because people don't have systems. Most agents, they show up at the office. They fly by the seat of their pants. They're the jack of all trades, master of none. They throw spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. They let their cell phone, their email control their day every day. What we want here at JPAR is we want systems. We want to turn you all into business-minded thinkers. People who run this thing like a business, not a hobby. And to do that, it requires systems. It requires processes. It requires lead generation, conversion, follow-up. That's the new era is right here. This you could get away with in the, in, in the old, old school way. Not anymore. we got to take care of this. Next is what must be different in your business. So out of that, what do you think that you need to do differently in your business? Let me ask you all a question. Show of hands. Who in here is happy today where you are in your real estate business, results-wise? You're getting the results you want. Show of hands. Raise them up. One. There's always one or two or three. There's always one percent, right, that are happy with where they are. Now, here's what I want you all to do is I want you to ask yourself that question. If you're not happy with where you are, if you're not getting the results today that you want, understand that today is a, is a byproduct of your actions the last six months. So whatever you've been doing the last six months, congratulations, today's the result of that. You follow? So if you haven't been doing lead generation, you haven't been doing conversion for the last six months, you're probably not real happy today. If you've been putting in systems and hiring the right people and you've been growing them and you've been doing, being intentional the last six months, you're probably pretty happy and optimistic of where we're going. But what we've got to do is we've got to change. My first six months, y'all, I had no listings, no buyers, no sellers. I sold a lot of things but no real estate. I blew 50 grand in six months. You know why? Because I'm all in. Understand that I have always been all in, and I'm all chips in all the time. Understand that, because this right here is, this, is what require, is required to be a one percenter. You all follow me? We can't be, oh, I don't know, I don't know. That's 95%. To our success, we got to be all in all the time. You with me? So what do we got to do? We got to change, change our results. Change our thinking, change our marketing, change our mindset, change who we're hanging out with, change our approach, change everything if we have to. But we have to change. And I'm going to show you how today. But I want you to understand that there's two different types of people in this room. There's a fixed thinker and a growth thinker. Most people are fixed thinkers. I'm not saying most of you are in, the, in this room are fixed thinkers, but most people in general are fixed thinkers. Let me back up. I skipped one here, didn't I, you guys? Um... 
There we go. So here's what I want to read. I want to read these. Tell me which one you are. And if you want to write, read a good book, it's a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Incredible. Great book. Here's what a fixed mindset is. They believe that your intelligence, personality, and character is inherent and static, locked down, or fixed. That your potential is determined at birth. It doesn't change. You're fixed. Stuck. Not going anywhere. Not growing. Good luck. So you avoid failure. You have a desire to look smart. You avoid challenges. You stick to what you know. The feedback and criticism is personal to you. And you don't change or improve. Because you're fixed. Do we know anybody that's fixed? I do too. The other side is, is where the 2% of the population have, which is what a growth mindset is. I have a growth mindset. Here's my growth mindset. I believe that intelligence, personality, and character can be continuously developed. That your true potential is absolutely 100% unknown and unknowable. It's impossible for every one of you guys to know your true potential. You'll never know it because you can become anything. You can do anything. So you have a desire to continuously learn. You're learning base. You confront uncertainties. You embrace challenges. You don't, you're not afraid to fail. That's why you're all chips in all the time, because you're not scared to fail. You don't, have a, you don't have security tied to the chips. So you're not afraid to fail. You put lots of effort to learn, and feedback is, uh, is about current capabilities. Who understands these two different types of mindsets? Do you understand the difference in your success? You must have a growth mindset, y'all. If you're in real estate and you're successful, you have to have a growth mindset because do things change in real estate? Does real estate change? Do markets change? Does lead generation change? Everything changes. So embrace the change and stop trying to find comfort and security in things staying the same and things being fixed. This is a huge part because this right here, you guys, is the foundation of a lot of your thinking. If you have a fixed mindset, I can't help you. I can help a growth mindset thinker all day, but you gotta think the right way. And understand that you can do anything. I think we've already discussed that, that anything is possible, you can achieve anything. Who knows Jim Rohn in the room? Look at that, your hand goes up so fast. He's the man. I'll tell you, my parents raised me as, an, uh, as a kid, but my Jim Rohn raised me as an adult. Um, he's dead now, but he was one of my mentors, and this guy's absolutely unbelievable. And Jim says this, if you want to have more, you have to become more. For things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. And for things to improve, you have to improve. If you grow, everything else grows for you. Who's with me? So here's the problem, though. A lot of people, they don't like to grow because they let, the, 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 let this thing stop them, which is fear. They let fear stop them. Oh, great, great, great Hoss, that sounds good, but ah, da, 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 right? oh, they hold back. Why? Because of fear. This is right here is the reason that the 97% choose comfort. 97% of people choose to what? Not change, to be comfortable, to, let their, to build this know-it-all wall comfort zone around them to where it gives them permission to not take an, a massive action. And this is fear. Some people have fear. I'll give you an example. I, uh, I remember whenever my first coach told me, he said, Haas, 10 million is the number, buddy. Get to 10 million. And me thinking, oh my gosh, 10 million, what, 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 what am I going to do then? Then I won't have any time. I'll have to work weekends. If I'm doing 10 million, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and I'll have all these other obstacles. So my question to you is, is who, raise your hand if you're doing 10 million in volume now. A couple, right? So for everybody that's not, when I say I want you to do 10 million in volume in the next 12 months, what's the first thought? Absolutely. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. I've been waiting to throw these hats like that, so just give me permission. You won't have any left. We'll have a lot of cappers. No, but for real, so, so many of you guys you don't think that you can do whatever. I want you all to know that who cares if the number is 10 million or 100 million. Your feeling inside shouldn't change if you have the right mindset. You shouldn't be, oh, boy. Well, then, 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 then. That's fear. I want you, to, as I work with you all on this, I want you all to eliminate fear from your life. Like, eliminate it. Because it's what prevents most people from ever achieving anything. Because they don't. They only achieve what they have to achieve. And I want you to achieve much more and get out of your own way. Understand that in business and real estate especially, most all of you are in your own way. 
You are the bottleneck. You are the reason that you're not where you want to be. So let's go in the mirror, look in the mirror, and the, look at the person in the mirror and go, let's go to work on that person. Let's make that person better. Let's make that person less fearful, more successful. Let's make this person grow. That's what we want to do because that's what la allows you to have massive success. I'll tell you this. People ask me, they say, hey, Haas, why are you so driven? And I am driven, y'all. I'm, like, I'm just, I've always been driven. I mean, I, I started a, a business in high school. I was making six figures a year in high school. I didn't go to college for, because I was already making money. You know, they didn't have a good enough value proposition to convince me to go when I was already running a business. But I was driven, and I'm driven today, and I asked myself why. And, I, and the only thing I could come up with was I remember whenever I was mowing grass, and I had a lawn service, and I had big old equipment with big commercial mowers because I picked up, a, I made a cold call to a Williams Pipeline company, and I, I sold them, it was a multi-million dollar contract that I sold and negotiated in my teens. My family is still servicing that contract today. And, and this company, it was, we, 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 we did commercial equipment, we had a lot of equipment, it was an incredible company. And I was filling up one day, pull up the gas station, the same place I filled up every day, and I'm filling up my mower, and this guy pulls up, pulls up next to me as I'm filling up. I recognize the guy, the guy's name was, was Terry, he's a family friend. And he pulls up, he goes, Haas Pratt. I said, hey, Terry. He goes, Haas, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> and that was the day I decided that I am unemployable. I'll never work for anybody in my life. And I will never fail because I will never get a real job. You follow? He's my internal enemy. Who's yours? What's yours? What drives you? Who are you trying to prove wrong or prove right? Who are you trying to get acceptance from? Who are you trying to prove that, that you can make this happen? Do you have that internal enemy? Do you have that person that you can fight against every single day? Because we all need an enemy, do we not? I mean, even God has Satan. <laughs> True story, right? So who's yours? One of the best gifts you could have is that internal enemy because your drive will come from that. And you must be driven because you must have... I'll tell you, the most successful people I've ever met had something to prove. Frank Sinatra says this. He says that the best revenge is massive success. Don't talk about it. Just be about it. Just go out there and do what you said that you were going to do and make it happen. And just don't even need the accolade. Just go accomplish it. And here's the thing, though, on fear. Fear is a future event appearing real. And this is what I want you to understand. Has anybody let themselves... Can, is it, who in here lets their fear stop us constantly? Any brave enough to admit it? I think all of us do that, by the way. Okay? So here's the deal with fear. Understand that you don't have anything to fear ever except not taking the action in the now that will determine your fear or success or your failure or success. So if you're not making the calls right now, here's what you're going to have uncertainty and anxiety of the future. If you're not doing the things that you need to do in your business, you're always going to be having anxiety for this future result. Now, some their past. Oh my gosh, the past result or the past. Today we're going to talk about past. We're going to dig into beliefs because we got to change the way we think if we're going to change our results. But understand this past thing is crap. Like don't even worry about this. Only worry about your actions in the now. Your actions that will determine your success or failure of the future. So do the things in the now always. We're going to talk about time management. But where do you spend your time? How do you invest your time? Because that right there is the most important thing. So anytime you find yourself being fearful, just stop and go, what am I doing right now? What am I doing? And here's what happens. If you make the right choices, the future's bright. Kevin, remember how many times I was locked in my office and I wouldn't even open the door for anybody? Because I was in there doing the things in the now, which is what? Setting appointments. Right. I think you had, a, you had a thing on your door that said prospect is now to enter. That's right. And if they, if they entered, I went, boom, kicked them right in when they walked in. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. I, I'm kidding, not really. But, but I took it seriously, right? And it's, and it's important that you guys take this thing seriously because in the now is where results live in real estate. In the now, where you invest your time in the now is going to determine how successful this thing is. And I'm going to help you, and I'm going to challenge your school of thought because there's going to be a lot of things that I tell you to stop doing in the now that you think is a good use of your time. 
and I'm going to make you do things in the now that you're maybe scared to do, but know that the goal is to make you better at that thing, to develop that skill so you can invest that time in the now that your business will grow. The answer is always in the now. What, how you're doing it in the now is always the answer. Some people think the answer is in a business plan. I think the answer is, is following and taking massive action towards a business plan. By the way, business planning is next month. We're going to go through a, an eight-page business plan, so be ready for that. So we're going to be preparing for you guys to get prepared for the next year. What, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? We reverse engineer it from there. All right, so that's going to happen next month, and we'll keep you posted on that. Here's the bottom line on fear. Understand that everything that you want to achieve is on the other side of your fear. Here's a good book to read. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Who's read that one? Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill wrote the book Think and Grow Rich. Who's read that book? In the 1930s. In the back, what's your name? You, no, this one, per, right, you read, think, you, you, no, are you the one that read it? Um, good book? Amazing book. Listen to it on audio. Incredible book. It'll change the way you think. It's mind-blowing. Written in the 1930s. I love old stuff because I like basics, and that's where the answer usually is. Right? So, all right, here's what I want to do is this. Is the question is, is where? Where? Where do you want to be? If you, because next month we're going to talk about business planning, and it's going to be real important that you put future pace yourself and go, where do I want to be in 12 months? That's what I want to know is where do you want to be? Where, why did you get in this real estate business? Why did you leave whatever it is that you left to get in this game? Where are we headed? What do you want? Is it important to know what we want? Is it important to know where we're headed? It's so important. You know, one of the things that I did, I, I used to, when we, I mowed grass, I used to mow in Missouri, we, you, we would make lawns look like baseball fields. It was like artwork. Right? I get done mowing the grass, that thing looks like Coffin Stadium. This thing's like lines in it, diamonds, it's awesome looking. But here's what you have to do. You have to be able to mow a straight line. Hundreds and hundreds of yards of mow a straight line on a lawnmower. And I remember training people and thinking, this is how you mow a straight line, because I was really good at it. I can mow a straight line pow, for miles. And they go, how do you do that? I go, it's easy. I say, you just got to have a focal point and know where you're headed. So pick something in the far distance where you're headed, Look at it, if it's a tree or a fence post, and don't take your eyeballs off of it. And don't even look down sideways, don't look back, only look forward, only focus on that focal point, only move towards that focal point, don't blink, just And here's what happens. When you get there, you turn around, and the line is straight as an arrow. And success seems like that. When you know where it is that you're going, success is much easier. If you don't know what that focal point is, you're lost. We're toast before the beginning. Now, your focal point may be completely different. My focal point may be I need to make $2 million a year. Yours may mean I need to make 200000 a year, right? Yep. Mine may be I, I don't want to work weekends. Yours may be I just don't want to work Sundays, and I want to be able to have a t like you, you, Everybody has their own focal point. Right. Your focal point's different than mine. Mine's I don't want to work weekends, and, 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 I have, and it's based around my family, right, at this point in my life. Whenever... We first started selling real estate. My focal point was put 30 listings, 30 listings a month, right? Every, mo every day. How do I put another sign on the ground? What's your focal point? Where are we headed? Where are we going? Because if we don't know that, I can't, shh, we're not going to get there. There's magic in knowing where we're headed. Has anybody ever experienced that? You? That's why I saw the passion on you. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's there, isn't it? Yeah. And it? And, and here's what happens when you know where you're going and you go, you can't explain it. People like Jimbo come in your life and they speak to you. You meet people like my mentor now, Tony Jerry, who come into my life. People and, will cut and resources and tools and books and knowledge will come into your life in ways that you've never experienced. What I've discovered in, in helping people succeed is, is uh, some people feel like they have to have all these answers before they know what the focal point is. True? I want you guys to not have to have all these answers and just have faith that those answers will come to you because you know where you're going. It's a distinction, and there's two different ways to think about it. I want you to do your part. Just know where we're going. I'll help you get there, but know what that thing looks like because everybody's is different. Because here's why. 
this right here will pull you towards it. It'll pull you towards it. Once we know, you can't even you stop it. But it starts with knowing. And here's what I want you guys to do, and I'm going to help you guys with this now. I want you to do an exercise. You can write it down. You can do it now. You can do it later. But I want you to do this exercise. And I want you to write down 100 things that you want to achieve in your life. Somebody, you, know, you may say, oh, Haas, come on. Really? 100? I bet some of y'all couldn't even come up with 100. And I'm not going to make you do it now, but by the time your pillow go, you put your head on your pillow, have that done. Write down 100 things that you want to achieve, do, accomplish in your life. Doesn't that sound like a pretty good thing to plan for? I had a guy tell me one time, I'm a farm boy, so he told me, he, I, I, I relate to analogies with like planting seeds and cultivating the seed and watching it grow. And I see these things, and I had a, my mentor said, here's what you do, Hoss. Write down the things you want to accomplish. In fact, he goes, write down 100 things. I want you to write them down, and I want you to, once you, once you have those 100 things, I want you to fold it up, put it in a way, and never look at it again. He, I go, what do you mean never look at it again? He goes, he goes, this process is like planting seeds. He goes, just like when we plant corn in the spring, we we got to plant the seeds of our life, of, our, of, of what you want to accomplish. So envision every one of those things as a seed that you're planting. That the universe doesn't know what it is that you want until you plant the seed. And so this process is planting the seed. And there's magic behind it. And he goes, you won't even understand it. But he goes, I promise you, in 10, 20 years, you're going to pull that out. And you're going to already accomplish those things. And you're not even going to know why. It's just going to happen. He goes, but it starts right there with writing those 100 things down. And I did it. I pulled it out. Look at it. I've, almost I've already have another list. Right? I want you all to do the same. Because nothing will have a bigger impact on your mindset than knowing where it is that we're headed and what we want to achieve. True story? Any questions so far? Good? Thumbs up? All right. So here's where we start, though. We start with personal philosophy. Here's the thing about you, what I've learned, and, and I'm, I'm fascinated by people, so that's why I still coach as heavily as I do. I coach people all over the country. I coach brokerages all over the country. I coach teams. I coach brokers. I coach agents, and I have for many, many, many years. And here's one thing that I've always known is everybody comes from a different framework. And, and I can teach people things now, but, like, everything I'm teaching them is going through this framework or this filter of a past or of a belief. A, a, a philosophy, and everybody has their own philosophy. If I'm telling you to go to, to go make two million dollars in the next year, you may be telling yourself, "Oh my gosh, but that's greedy." You see what I mean? And that may come from passed on to you from your dad or from your. We don't know. So here's what I want to do: is I want to know what your personal philosophy is on about a lot of things, but especially these things on money. You get into business. Yes, money's not everything, Haas, but guess what, y'all? It's required to stay open. <laughs> I agree, money's not everything. Business isn't either, as you're going to see. But money is a byproduct of your mindset, and you can accumulate as much of it as, a, as you want, but how you think will determine the level that you accumulate. Do you have a $100,000 mindset or do you have a million-dollar mindset? It comes down to that. Change your thinking, change your results. I'll give you an example on money. I had a client up in New Jersey one time I was coaching. This guy wanted me to help him make $100,000 a year. That was it, 100 grand. I'm like, that's easy, we can do that. We do it, we start off, he starts growing his business quickly. I'm like, dude, we're gonna crush 100,000. Like, we're gonna hit like 250, this is great. And he keeps doing it, and all of a sudden he hits his goal about month seven, and then he doesn't answer his phone. Then he misses calls, and he disappears. And he doesn't send his sheets in anymore. I'm like, what happened? Why? He goes, I don't know, Hoss. I do this every year. And I knew right then as soon as he said it. I go, who was it? Who do you get your acceptance from? Who do you compare yourself to? Who is it? He goes, my dad. I go, how much does your dad make? He goes, 100000 a year. And this is what he did. He compares himself. And we all do this, you guys. This is the thing. We all do it. We all have somebody that we're comparing ourselves to. True story? 
That's a true story. You must go on a personal <laughs> finding mission to find out who that person is because this is beliefs. And we gotta, sh- we got to rip these things open if we can address them. But know that your acceptance and your internal security comes from a belief of somebody typically that you get your acceptance from. And I knew that. In this case, it was his dad. His dad ran his own business. His dad made 100000 a year, but he never saw his dad. And so he, 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 he says when somebody's making over 100000 a year and they're self-employed, that means they never see their family. Right? And guess what I did when I changed that? He's crushing it. Just turned it around like that because we identified it. Same thing with money, and but also business. Here's my bel- belief on business. I would have failed if I helped you guys build your business, but we lose everything else. To me, that's the ultimate failure. So the ultimate failure is succeeding and not being fulfilled. That's not fun, is it? No, we want to succeed and we want to build our business around our why. In my case, it's my family, my girls. I, you know, I want to eat breakfast every day with them. I want to hang out with them at night. Last night, we watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I want to be able to do that without having to think about the 97,000 things that I have to do. But my business is built around them. My business, everything that I do. My business is not my life. It's just the vehicle that I chose to fund my life. And the differentiation for you guys, you need to have that mindset. Because if you have the mindset that your business is everything, what happens? At the cost of what? Relationships, family, health, friends, right? So we got to get. We don't want to get it twisted. We want to succeed, and we want to have the right vision the whole time, and we want to have a respect to business. And as you'll see, because we're going to invest our time in this business. And the reason we have to have this mindset is because we're going to be investing our time in this business. And I don't want you thinking that this business is everything. Because you're not going to be fulfilled, happy. I want you to invest the time, get the result, and then you'll see how we do this. But I want you to think in the right way. And back up on time. This thing like skips like two. It's like time, and then here we go. Here's time. So here's my philosophy on time. If I'm watching Ninja Turtles with my daughters or I'm here speaking, the time that I'm investing with you guys, I've got to have a maximum result. I'm not, I'm here, I'm present, I'm giving you everything that I have. I'm not thinking, my mind's not somewhere else, I'm here doing this. Whenever, uh, whenever I'm with my family, it's on that channel. When you're prospecting, it's, you're, you want to invest the most time to get the maximum result. If you spend 40 hours a week in real estate, we want to we get results from that time. And I want you guys to respect that time and own your time and make your time worth something. Otherwise, you're just going to not get a result. I'm going to show you this. Let me break it down. Time management. I told you I have a lot to cover, too, today, you guys. But I want you to know what your time is worth. What's your number? What's your time worth? Isn't that a good question, what's your time worth? Raise your hand if you know what your time is worth. How much is your time worth? Boom. That means she makes 300000 a year on a 40-hour work week. Right? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, we have the thinker in the room. This is the no, of course, there's, but as I'm going to show you, there's a lot of there's expenses, but all that stuff, it doesn't matter. What your time is worth per hour is revenue. Right, so here, let me show you. If you, I gotta come closer to this thing. Come on there, guy. All right, if you make $50,000 a year, you make $25 an hour. If you make $100,000 a year, you make $50 an hour. If you make $200,000 a year, you make $100 an hour. If you make 500,000 a year, you make $250 an hour. If you make a million, you make $500 an hour. What's your number? Do you know it? Yes? yes. This class was totally worth the entire uh, fee that was charged to you guys today for that piece of information. Because now we know. So, if I make 200, let's say if I make two, if I make 200,000 a year, I make $100 an hour. Am I going to go home and mow my lawn? Why? 
Am I going to wash my own car? Not unless I enjoy it. Now, I may mow my own grass if I enjoy it. Am I going to paint my own house? No. Am I going to clean my own house? No. So why? Because it would be the most expensive lawn service I've ever given myself. Right? And that's, what, that's time management. Am I going to input the listing if I make $100 an hour? No. I've never inputted a listing in my life. I've never taken a deal from contract to close in my life. And I've never worked a buyer in my life. Right? Why? This right here. Time. My time is, I'm the, look, it's the listing boss. It's list another house. Put another sign on the ground. That's where our, my time is worth. Not spit opening doors for buyers, but put more signs in the ground. It's not going to lunch with the vendor who's trying to get my business. It's what? Get back on the phone. Get back, on the, get back in front of more people. I'm going to show you how to do this on how to say yes or no to your time, but you must understand this number right here, what your time is worth. And whatever you can do for less, delegate it. Whatever you can do for more, delegate it. Here's the thing. Your job, this needs to always be going up. So here's an exercise. Write down the last five years of production. I had a guy do this yesterday. I'm, guy, I've coached for many years. I've coached him for like five years. But I said, I want you to write down Every year from the last five years, I want you to write how many homes you sold, what your GCI was, and that was it. And I said, the year, what, how many homes you sold, and GCI, five years back. And I go, that's going to tell me how to coach you. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, you'll see. It'll give you the clarity that you need, and it'll also give me the clarity, because what am I looking for? That number better be freaking going up. And if it's not going up, it's because he's not growing. If he's not growing, it's because he's not thinking the right way. Most of the time is the culprit. We had changes thinking. But I want y'all to do that and look at this number. Is it going up? And it should always be going up. Why? Because we're growing, <laughs> right? We're growth thinkers. And because we're growth thinkers, our income should go up every year. And if it's not going up every year, it's because we're not doing enough growing, all right? And growing begins right here between the ears. So I want you to understand this right here. These are high leverage activities. And in real estate, you have four high leverage activities that pay you more money than anything. And that's, sorry, right here. It, that's prospecting, write these down, y'all. Prospecting, <coughs> presenting, building relationships, and leading. This is all y'all need to be doing. All you need to be doing every day is prospecting for new business, for leads that coming in that you're following up with, your sphere of influence, you're presenting, you're on listing appointments, buyer appointments, vendor appointments. You know, you're, you're intentional, you're presenting, you're teaching. Like right here, me, I'm presenting right now. It's always a good use of my time when I'm doing this. Because this is what part of what I was, it's what I do. Right? But next is, is building relationships. Am I going to go to lunch, let's say, with a vendor who wants to, not taking anything away from the vendors in here. I'm going to work with you guys on helping you develop a mean and incredibly powerful vendor program, and there's a right way to a wrong way to handle vendors, I'm going to show you over the course of our time together, not today, but as we're working together, I have to put together an incredible vendor program that will help you grow your business. But building relationships, spending time with your sphere of influence, your A's, B's, C's, people that like you and love you, and then leading. When you're teaching your team or you're leading, you're, you're, you're doing a training in here for JPAR, always a good use of your time, is inputting the listing on there. Is going to pick up a lockbox on there. Is going to get the sign. Is going to fax this and that on there. Get real with your time, y'all. The only time that matters is, is the time that is invested in the business that's going to make a difference. And if we want to grow the business, this is where we need to invest our time. And here's why I was put on this earth, to help you better at all four of these. I'm going to help you better at prospecting. I'm gonna, even if you don't like prospecting, prospecting is like, like there's a lot of different ways to, 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 you know, to break it down. But we're going to find the way that you prospect based on your strengths. Because we all have strengths and weaknesses. Presenting, building relationships, and leading. Here's what I want you to understand. Is it doesn't matter how many hours you work. 
the busy, busy agent. Just busy being busy, being busy, being busy. Oh my God, I work 80 hours a week, but she only sold eight homes last year. <laughs> right? And, and they're always going around bragging, I made just 90 hours this week. Where's the money? <laughs> Time and effort have very little to do with how much money you make. I want that to sink in. I remember one time I was at CrossFit and I was complaining. And the guy, that's why I love CrossFit. I don't go because I hurt my back. But back when I used to go to CrossFit, I remember I was, I, was, I, I, I was talking to this guy and this guy was the CEO of a huge company. And I was complaining about something. And I don't complain often, but when I do, you know, hey, if I don't catch myself, I let somebody like this guy catch me. And he goes, Haas, time and effort have very little to do with the amount of money you make. And I was like, I remember I was clean. I was like, and I had to see, like, it took days for that to sink in. But time and effort have very little to do with the amount of money you make. What does that mean? It's kind of like, uh, what's that movie with Curly? The Secret to Life? Never mind then. Okay. Um, city Slickers. All right. How many hours do you work in your business? Write it down. How many hours do you work in your real estate business? Write the number down right now. How many hours? Next question is, is how many, really, no, no, yeah, how many hours do you work in your business, but then how many of those hours were spent on dollar producing activities? You guys are unemployed every 90 days. The only thing that matters in your business as far as growing the business is dollar producing activities. Make sense? In real estate, that's everything. Your foot's always on the prospecting and lead generation throttle because that's the name of this business. We're in that business. And the next is, is are you focused on the 80% that, that produced the 20% or are you focused on the 20% that produced the 80%? All right, I'm gonna share with you this. This is something that I uh, will welcome you guys to do. It's an exercise that I've done. I've always done this since I was a kid. Um, but I've always, I've always wanted to know where I was because I wanted to live a life legendary and live life on my terms. And I knew that that re required a, a timeline. It required a plan. And so one of those ways that I do that is I wanted to clarity, and I wanted to, to have clarity of what stage of where I am of what part of my life. Like, where am I going to be in five years? Where am I going to be in 10 years? Where am I going to be in 50? How old will I be in 50 years? Who's going to be dead? Who's going to be alive? Where am I going to live? How old are my kids going to be? And here's what I did. So I wrote down every, this is myself, 34, my wife is 37, Kennedy is my daughter, 9, Piper is 3, Ivy is 2. This was last year, so we're all a year older now. In 20, that's 2015. In 2018, in three years, I'll be 37, my wife will be 40, girls will be 12, 6, and 5. Fast forward to 10 years. In 10 years from today, it'll be 2025, I'll be 44 years old in 10 years. My wife will be 47, Kennedy's 19, I have a couple teenage girls coming through the mix at 13 and 12, right? Where does my business need to be right there at that stage in 10 years? Where do I want to be? Where am I investing my time? Where do we live? At what level, do I, am I going to build a business that I'm on the road at that crucial time when my, kid, my two daughters are teenagers? Am I going to be gone? Well, it depends really on how they act, <laughs> right? They're like, a, they're like, see y'all, I got a seminar in San Diego, right? What does this allow me to do? It gives me clarity. And that's, and I, I take it a step further because I'm a little crazy, but I put on there my dogs, my in-laws, right? I, I put everybody, here's the reason why. Because look, in, at some point in 15 years, it's going to be 20, 30, that's going to be called reality. And I want to, I want to be prepared for that time. And that's what a life timeline does. It allows you to get clear with how much time we truly have because so, so many people think that we have endless amount of time, and I truly believe that we don't. I believe that our time is limited. I know for me, I have 15 years. That's what I gave myself. I don't have forever. People go, oh, so you're young. You have forever. I'm like, no, I don't. I have 15 years. And, every, and how I spend every second counts. What I say yes to matters. Right? That's being intentional. And that's what I want you to do. You guys may not know what to do with that today, but know that our time together is going to be geared towards making that timeline more richer and more, more certain because we know where we're going. Okay? And it starts right here with the daily method of operations.
every single day when we show up at the office, what do you do? How do you invest that time? Because we only have a limited time. We all know that. We all have high leverage activities. We know that. But wh where do you spend your time? When do you invest that time? Do you, when do you make time? How do you do that? I'll be honest with, with you on this. I, I hate the word, by the way, eliminate I'll be honest with you because it insinuates that you're not sometimes not honest. Okay? I just caught myself. That's just a little sales lesson 101. So here's the deal. When we show up at the office every day, we got to have a daily method of operations. We need to rig the system, folks. And the system is, is eliminating everything that you don't need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? Eliminate it. So here's, the, here's an example. You can take a picture of this. I follow this every day. I have never missed a day of prospecting and lead generation. Ever. I was, I, to this day, I am the most consistent person I've ever even coached. Most people miss. I never did. And the reason is, is because I was so obsessed with this time that happened before noon that I wouldn't let anything get in the way of that time. That was the money-making time. I'm a maker in the morning and a manager in the afternoon. What kind of a maker? A rainmaker. I'll manage what I make rain in the afternoon, but I'm going to make it in the morning. Because if I don't make it in the morning, am I going to make it in the afternoon? Probably not. We want to make in the morning, manage in the afternoon, prepare for success. So it starts off, 525, wake up, enjoy an attitude of gratitude. I wake up, psh, thank God I just woke up, psh, amazing. Now, how do I go put another sign on the ground today? That was the next thought. Every day, get out of bed, shower, dress, 6 o'clock, drink water, take vitamins, stretch, push-ups, sit-ups, get the blood flowing, 6.30, sit down, plan the day. Morning goals, planning, breakfast, read goals, plan the day, uh, 7 o'clock, family time, 7.30, read for 20 minutes, 7.50, journal for 10, 8 o'clock, it's game time, focused on lead prep, 8 to 9 is getting ready to get ready. Eight to nine is, is where's my leads last night? Where's the leads today? Who am I gonna call? What letters are going out? What postcards are going out? Who are we marketing to? Who's in the pipeline? That's eight to nine. Nine o'clock, done, start, shh, next, 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 follow up, prospecting, calling, setting appointments. Nine to noon, you guys, is the time that will determine your level of success in this business. I promise you, I've worked with so many agents that their level of success always comes down to their habits in the, between 9 and noon. Some of you are so lucky that you have a database that don't, you don't even need to prospect. They just call you up and go, hey, Kevin, I've got another house for you to sell. All right, man, come by 7 o'clock. I'll sign the paperwork. And then Kevin's like, oh, there's another one, right? And then next call. Hey, Kevin, uh, Steve wants to uh, buy a home. I want to make an introduction. Can I send an email? Perfect, great. Then he's lucky there. Not guys like me. When I started, I didn't have that. Right? I had to go get it. I had to hunt. I didn't have a database. I was brand new here. So I went after people who didn't know me. But I went after people who didn't. Not only did they not know me, but they wanted to sell. I figured if I could convince people who wanted to sell, and I spent that time calling them, that's a good use of my time. So I called Fizbos. My first month calling Fizbos, I listed 30 of them. 30. Just, just, I was hooked. I was like, why would anybody not be doing this? Right? So how we invest our time from 9 to noon is going to be important in our time together because I'm going to help you identify who those people are. How do you market to them? What do you market to them? What do you say? How do you say it? What, how do you position yourself? How do you separate yourself to, the, 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 to that niche? You will follow me? We got to know that part. So we're investing the time in 9 to noon and we're getting the results. But it takes your massive action at night to noon. Who's with me on that? Who in here's fear of success is creeping in going, not me, I'm not doing that. I'm happy with my 60,000 a year. I'm fine. In fact, when's this class over? I'm good with my 60. <laughs> right? Who are those people? And pay attention to what that voice is in your mind and what it's telling you. Because everybody has a different voice telling them different things. Right? Next is, is from 12 to 1, that's when we do meetings. That's when we meet with people. That's when we're meeting with our assistants and our buyers, agents, and our team leaders. From 1 to 4, that's when we're negotiating the deal. That's when we're meeting with the vendor. That's when we're following up with, with people on our voicemail. That's when we're responding to emails. 
from 4 to 7, I'm gone. I'm on appointments. If I'm not on a listening appointment, I'm back on the phone. I'm back knocking the door. I'm back getting face to face. I'm doing whatever it takes from 4 to 7 to what? Do more presenting. That right there is a day that you guys have got to design for yourself, is what is your perfect day? How do you work? If this doesn't work for you, fine, modify it. Just make sure that that time from 9 to noon is happening somewhere, and it happens every day. It has to happen. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time here. So that, that, that has to happen. So here's what I want you to do. Here's some action steps. I want you to, number one, is I want you to create your daily method of operations. By the time that we talk next, I want everybody to have their daily method of operations. And in that time, you want to schedule your high leverage activities, which are the activities that you get paid the most for with your actions. So prospecting, presenting, building relationships, and leading. I want you to write down your 100 dreams list, meaning write down that 100 things that you want to achieve, do, and accomplish in your life, 100 things. And then lastly, Write down your vision on a paper. I call it your vision sheet. What is the plan on that life timeline? If you were to plan that whole entire, your whole look back and look at your, where we're going your entire life, what does that look like? Write it down in a vision sheet. What are you accomplishing? You follow me? All right. Here we go. How are we doing on time? 11.15, so I have 45 minutes? Sweet. All right. I'm going to step into step two, but in, in part two, we're going to go between the ears more of, of the why, right? And I'm going to help you, and I, but I want you to help yourself too. Now, part of success in coaching, you guys, is, is knowing how to be coached. And knowing how to be coached is, is know what you're looking for. And every one of you are looking for something different, and you're only one piece, one thing, one piece of information, one idea, one coach away from achieving any level of success that you want to achieve. But it's up to you to always know what that thing is you're looking for. What I find is, is some people go to seminars and they expect me to just find it all for them. They come to my seminar, my three-day conference, and they're like, okay, Austin, show me what you got. And I'll show them, but they never find what they're looking for if they don't know what they're looking for. Always know what it is in the gap of what you need and what you don't have. And I'll show you how to do that as we get into part two. Um, by the way, you guys, is this making sense so far? Is mindset important? I'll tell you this, it's everything. It truly is. I remember one time, you guys may, you know, this guy was, uh, you guys probably know him, uh, a top agent in the area. And I was a young agent at the time. And he comes up to me and he goes, and then he was 17. He was 17 years old, this kid. And his name's Josh DeShong. You know Josh? Do you know who, I, who I'm talking about? Yeah, when you think 17-year-old realtor, it's automatically you think of, right? It's like, where's Josh? It's like, <laughs> he comes up and he goes, Hoss. And I didn't mean it at the time. We were at, the, at, at our office. And he comes up, and I'm on the elevator. He goes, oh, you're Hoss. I'm Josh. I'm like, hey, Josh. He goes, Hoss, I, I'm, I'm going to be the youngest real estate agent in the state of Texas. I'm about to get licensed. I'm, you know, I'm like, really? How old are you? He goes, I'm 17, about to turn 18. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I was like, you know, like, what do you do? He goes, what do I do? Where do I start? And I remember y'all telling him, going, and I was, like, short on time or something, so I was probably direct with him, you know. I was probably like, well, here's what you do, right? But it was, and he comes up, and I go, here's what you need. Look, you're, you're 18. you got tons of time. I said, just join a team. Learn everything you need to learn from the team. And just take this time as growing where you're, like, join a top team where you can learn in, in, in this, and you, can, and you can join a team. But I'm like, look, you need to join a team and learn a little bit. And I left. I didn't realize that was his go-get-a-real-job moment. <laughs> right? I'll show him join a team. <laughs> and, I, and I come back a year later, he's a top agent. I'm like, look at this kid. Right? Anything can happen, you guys. It's up to you. Anything. Even the 17-year-old kid can be a top agent in office. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how, uh, how much experience you have. None of that stuff matters. But he did. He turned it into fuel. I, I learned right then. I'm like, look, Hoss, be careful of the advice you start getting. You know, even if the kid's 17, you don't think he stands a chance. Just keep your mouth shut and give him, you know, lead him in the right direction. Right? So change your thinking, change your results. So how do we do this? How do we change the way that we think about success, about our philosophy? Right here. Here's what I want you to do. Is it starts right here with our thinking, which is our thoughts. 
This is everything, what we're thinking about, how we think about it, because that will determine our actions, which will then determine our results. So this is the culprit. This is what we have to go to work on. And I want you to realize that it starts, we're going to go through personal philosophy, personal power, but personal power is something that every one of us have. And this is the part that you can control. Um, I believe this. I believe that there's a better version of every one of you in you. I call it the you inside you. It's you 2.0. It's the better version. You know, the, the part that every one of you strives to be, or at least knows that you need to become, right? Do we all have that inside us? Yeah. Kicking us around all day, making us feel bad. What are you doing eating that crap? You know you're not supposed to eat that crap. I know I'm not supposed to, but I like it, right? What are you doing not picking up the phone? You know we need to be picking up the phone, making the call, setting appointments. I know, right? That's it, the you and you. So what we want to do is we want to take that person and we want to unleash this person. I'm going to show you how but today, but I'm going to show you how to unleash this person. But I want every one of you to become more of who you are. And let's embrace this of becoming the person that you need to become. Be more of who you are, less of what you're not. I'll give you an example. I was working with somebody on speaking, and they go, Hoss, you know, I don't know how you do it. You're just, when you speak, you know, especially when I'm at a conference. I'm at a conference, I'll just turn it on. It's a performance, right? And he goes, how do you do it? I go, here's what I've learned about good speaking, is I said, when you're, as a good speaker, I, I, I remember going through the process of protecting kind of how I'm presenting, like in this shell, Maybe I was the too young shell, and I didn't want to, you know, upset anybody, or I was this, and I was trying to play this safe, right? I remember going through, going, screw that, and coming out of that, going, I'm going to be more of who I am. I'm going to be more direct, more dynamic, more bold. I'm going to, I'm going to step out of all of these limiting beliefs that I have when I step on stage. And I'll show you guys how to do that here later. But that process is what I want you to go through. Step out of who you are and more of who you are inside. Because here's why. Everything's a performance. The listing presentation, is that a performance? Yes. Picking up the phone, making calls is a performance. Meeting with clients is a performance. And so I'm going to show you how to shift your thinking to where you can become more of who you are. And here's what happens. You'll become more attractive. People will like you more. There'll be more, they'll, you'll, pe more people will tell you yes. You'll be in more control. And you'll be able to take prospects and convert them much more easily. But we're going to start with that process. And know that it starts with you letting that inner person out. may sound weird, but I'm telling you, this stuff's going to make a lot of sense. But before I show you how, I want to ask you a question. The why. Do you play the game to win or do you play the game not to lose? Ask yourself the question. Are you in the game to not, win, to not lose or do you play the game to win? Do we know the answer? Do, do you know the, 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 the distinction between those two? What? So when you play the game to win, you want to give it your all because you have to win. If you play the game not to lose, you're just totally the opposite. You're just you're not giving it your all, but you're not losing. Yeah. What about mindset? What's the mindset like for the person who plays the game to not lose? What else? Those are good, right? Isn't it amazing? One question tells you so much. Huh? How are they going to be in negotiation? Huh? You can say anything you want. What sounds more fun? Just what, 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 what mindset do uh, you think would be more fun? Doesn't it sound like more fulfilled, more fun, less stress? Y'all, we don't ever lose. We only, we only win or learn. And we're growth thinkers. So as growth mindset thinkers, that's it. Like, we are here to play the game to win. We always win. 
Because if we don't get that listing, we learn from that listing, which means we win. We never lose. We never play the game to not lose. That's scarcity, not abundance. And it's the how you think is important. And it's everything. I have competitors, y'all. Competitors that everybody in this room would know. And I'm telling you that, they, that their thinking is not the same as me. Why? Just isn't. I think in abundance all the time. I'm like, I don't win. I am my number only competitor. I had a top agent in my office, and he may have not liked my answer. But he goes, and I'm not going to tell his name, but this guy you all would know too. And he goes, I, he goes, he goes, I am so comp-. And he's like one of the top agents in the country, like top five in the country. He goes, he goes, I, I'm so competitive. I'm so driven. He goes, are you competitive, Hoss? I go, not really. He goes, you're not competitive? Are you kidding? I'm like, not really. I go, the only person I compete with is the person in the mirror. Right? I don't, and that's true. Is that not true? And I said, the only person I compete with is, is me. Like, I don't compare my insides to other people's outsides. I look in the mirror and I go, that's who I got to go compete with. I got to be a better version of that person tomorrow than I was today. Is that not the truth? That's the truth. Does that affect your mindset? If you're rolling around the office, you know, mean mugging the guys, your girls got more listings than you. You're my competitor, Kevin. Get you next time, boy. What does that do to my mindset? What does that mean? You follow? You guys follow me? You are your only competitor. Be competitive, but just be competitive with yourself. Trust me, you don't know what the heck's going on in everybody else's lives, right? That's why I love the saying, don't compare your insides to other people's outsides. It's easy to do, isn't it? Especially our little bubble of Plano, Texas. Don't we just love it here? Everybody's got new cars and new houses and everybody's happy. (laughs) Right? We are in a total bubble here. Do you all understand that? (laughs) Total bubble. I mean, it's a great bubble. I love my bubble. Do you all love the bubble? I do, too. It's great. And we're also going to be in a bubble in real estate here for the next couple of years. So y'all are in an amazing market for real estate. Um, The growth here is going to be tremendous. So the the level of success that you achieve in this market over the years is totally up to you. But the opportunity is there. I coach people in other parts of the country. Let me tell you something. It's nowhere near what it is here in, in this market. So we take that and take advantage of it. Next. I talked about definiteness of purpose, but here's what I want you to realize. Let me back up here, right right here, is this definiteness of purpose is in a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And here's what I've learned, and I've learned this through, it's called, you know, there's also, it's also called like a hero's journey, where you're always going for it, you're always learning for, for, you're always learning what you learned during when you were going for it, you help other people who are about to go for it. Then you get rewarded because you see those people doing the same. And it's this cycle. This cycle that requires you to always go for it and always get out of your own way. And it's kind of like when you got in real estate. Were you all scared? No? Somebody, so, no? Let me tell you something. Who in here is brand new to re- in real estate? Good. I love new agents. Let me tell you all something. You guys want some advice? Are you new too? What's your name? Yeah, Clay. Clay. Um, here's some advice. You're never going to use the word chattel again in your entire career. <laughs> Remember chattel? You're also never going to use the word fee simple again. <laughs> Why? Why do they teach us that stuff? The real world of real estate's about getting your phone to ring, which is a skill set that most new agents got to go learn now. So take whatever you learn in real estate school, respect it, got it, I got my license, but now we're in the marketing game. Now we're in the getting the phone to ring game. Now we're in the converting game. Look at it that way, because I blew 50 grand and making a lot of mistakes between I got that thinking. I don't want you all to invest, fit, waste 50 grand. In fact, Shane, let's do a training on the, you know, how, where not to spend your money. Well, it'll be great. It'll be awesome. I was kind of kidding, but we could. I mean, it would be great. All right, I get a whole session. Where Don't spend your money here. Don't do this. Recipe cards, definitely don't do those. 
I did recipe cards. I promise you, I never got the phone call. Hey, Hoss, that was an um, unbelievable pumpkin pie recipe. <laughs> Hoss, come list my house. Are you kidding me? Jeez. Unbelievable. Everybody loved it. What do you charge? Perfect. Come list it. I'll pay you a percent more. No. Nope. Doesn't work like that, does it? So think, change your thinking, change your results. New agents, understand that what you've learned up until this point, eh, flush it. It does you no good, other than your experiences from your previous job in most cases, right? But now in real estate, sp speed is important. Time is important. And the time that you develop these skills that you need in real estate, like how to convert, how to market, what to pos how to position yourself, all these things need to happen quickly. Good news is, is you're here, you join an incredible company. Like, this company gets it, trust me, I work with brokerages all over the place, and this company, JP, they get it. You know, Shannon, putting together a rocking training, it's gonna help you, but don't, put more, put more urgency on getting better at those skills. Follow me? Don't expect it to come to you as easy as you think it's going to. Is that good advice? No? I think it's great advice. Right? Because why? Because it requires you to go out to the marketplace and get it. Got it. Thank you for the listing. Got another one. Right? But you got to go to the marketplace and get the listing. Don't expect them to hand you the listings. Here, here's another one. 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 Don't expect that to happen. You follow? Yeah. That's a big distinction. I waited too long. It wasted $50,000. Don't do that. Next is personal power. Who in here does affirmations? Man, that's a good group. So take a screenshot of this. These are some good affirmations. Um, I, I, I mean, I have been more consistent with affirmations uh, at different times in my life. I mean, I'm not perfect every day, but affirmations have been a big help on those days whenever I was wondering the why did I do this forgetting who I was for a minute. You ever forget who you are? Sometimes it's good to go to the mirror and go, Hoss, did you forget who the hell you are? You're Hoss, you can do anything. You snap out of it. You ever have that pep talk with yourself in the mirror? Right? Snap out of it, let's go, let's get to work. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. These affirmations will help you. I love, the, I love affirmations because ch it just changes the way you think. Now, I wanna talk about personal growth for a minute. And, like a bamboo tree, a bamboo tree takes years and years and years to grow roots. Forever. Does anybody know how long? It's like eight years or something. And, it's, and you plant the seed, and the bamboo tree goes, starts growing all these roots. Growing roots, like deep roots. And people are like, well, what the heck, man? I planted this tree like seven years ago. This thing's still not grown. What is it? It must be bad seed. And then all of a sudden, that year that it comes up, the sprout hits the air, hits the sun, pew, skyrockets, grows super fast, and all of a sudden people are like, what the heck, man, this tree came from nowhere. But did it come from nowhere? No, because the tree is as deep as the roots are. And that's what we want to do, and that's what I want you to do, is be like the bamboo tree. Build the roots to where nobody can take it away from you. And the roots are what, the, are, are, are what make your success happen. Your roots are the reason nobody can take it away from you. Well, what are roots? Roots as in the ability to convert prospects on the phone. Roots are the ability to, to send a mailer and get a response. Roots are to be able to pick the phone up and convert prospects, convert them, bring value, and, and have the, the mindset during the whole time of, of not, oh, what are you doing, why are we doing this, da, 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 right? Roots are so personal self-improvement. What are your roots? They're skills. I tell people, that people, I want to be a millionaire. I'm like, well, before you become a millionaire, you got to be a skillionaire. Like, you can't be a millionaire without being a skillionaire. If you become a millionaire without being a skillionaire, you're going to lose the millions, and you're not going to have to go back to ground one, develop the skills. At that point, it's less fun because you've already thought that you made it. <laughs> right? So be obsessed with the repetition and the next, 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 next. Because you're building the bamboo roots. And when that happens, whenever I was on the phone, I'll, I'll just tell you all, for three hours a day, 
when Kevin was in my office, brand new, and I was on the phone every day, I didn't know that that time would lead to what I do today, where I impact thousands of people, I help thousands of people do the skill. I had no clue that's where the direction that this was going. You follow me? I knew it was going to be good if I was doing the actions in the now that determine my success or failure, but I didn't know how good. And today, I'm doing much better than I could have ever dreamed because now I get to help other people do it, right? I came in, you didn't know me. You came in, you go, Haas, I've been listening to your calls. They're amazing. I don't even know who you are, right? You're probably rolling around town listening to me, listening to make my phone calls, right? I didn't know that, though, then whenever I was doing the thing. And that's what I want you guys to know. You don't always know the path, but know that what we're doing in the now. Personal growth. Jim Rohn, another one from him. This is a gym. Income seldom exceeds your own personal development. Here's my question on personal development. What level are you? And there's four levels of learning. And this will help you not only tell more stories, but share, share more experiences. But it's this, it's the four levels of learning. And the four levels of learning are this. Number one is, you don't know what you don't know. You understand that? Here's one thing I've learned. I don't know crap, y'all. I'm serious, like, about anything. I may think that I know, but I truly don't know. Because remember, I'm in a bubble here in Plano. There's a lot of things I don't know about, right, that I think maybe around here, but I've never experience, for example, what it's like to go days without a shower, days without water that's fresh. Like, I don't know what I don't know with anything. And same thing with all of us. So number one is, is you got to understand that. The, the biggest mistake that you can make in your journey to success is thinking you know everything. Because when you think you know everything, you'll always be humbled to realize that you don't know everything. But understand that you don't want to build this know-it-all wall. A know-it-all wall repels people. It, it, it's the opposite of, of attracting success. It will run from you. So always keep an open mind. Always realize you have no clue what you're talking about. You don't know what you don't know. And always be seeking to know more, which is number two, which is now you know. Some of you came here today. You didn't know what you didn't know. Now you know. Now it's up to you what you do with what you know. You're not an expert yet, but you could be. But know that now we know. The third is experiencing what you know. You got to experience what it is that you know. You can listen to those calls all day long until your speakers blow. But until you pick up the phone and make the calls yourself and experience what it's like when somebody says, how much do you charge? Well, I decided to take my home off the market. All you realtors are the same. What are you going to do to market my home? Until you've experienced that, it'll never become a skill. You may think that it can become a skill by having the calls memorized. You, get, you may be able to get, make those calls and say the words better than I say it at the right time, right? And you can role play with the best of them. But until you go to the marketplace and you experience that in the real world, this will never happen. It'll easily happen. You'll develop the skill when you apply what it is that you know in the market over and 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 over again. And keep going over and over and over. Repetition is the mother of all skill. Repetition is the mother of mastery. Be obsessed with doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. In your high leverage activities of prospecting, presenting, building relationships, and leading. Next, 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 next. Y'all tracking with me? Then it becomes a skill. Don't be, oh, this isn't working. Oh, I need to try something new. Oh, this isn't new. Oh, I need to do this. You're not yet an expert. These four levels, you guys, should, I want you to always realize this, because I have, there's a lot of people who think they know everything, but they don't experience it, and they're sitting here doing a little backseat drive, and there's some Monday morning quarterback into the people who develop, develop a skill, right? So I want you to develop a skill, and the only way we do that is we, got to understand these processes and experience it is the most important which is where it all where it all comes so how do we do that well i'll show you how if i can get my clicker to work success gap you're here you want to be here you're at five million a year in volume you want to be at 20. you're working buyers you want to stop doing that you want to work sellers 
It's the success gap. You want, you, you're here, you want to be here. We all have it. It always exists. The success gap is always there, and it will always exist in your business. Realize it. Realize that you don't know what you don't know during this gap. Realize that there's people, money, resources, information, markets, mentors, coaches that you don't yet have that you need to get to close the gap. Respect it, because sometimes if you don't, you go for it and you don't respect the gap and you fall through the gap. But understand this, that the, the difference right here from the gap is personal growth. It's what it's all about. It's all about getting better. And we get paid by bringing value to the marketplace. We get paid by delivering the value. So if we want to increase the money we make per hour, what do we do? Increase the value to the hour. Bring more value to people. It's the number one rule. I don't control your income. The value you bring to the marketplace control, controls your income. So what we want to do is this. I'm going to move on to this one. Is invest in yourself. You're only one piece of information away from achieving any level of success you want to achieve. I work with a lot of high performers. I work with a lot and I hang out with a lot, right? So my friends are, I was at dinner with my, uh, with my coach and mentor. He's actually more my mentor, Tony Jerry. If you guys don't know Tony, um, he's, a, he's a coach to the top CEOs. Uh, I'm super blessed and thankful to have him in my life. You know, I went to dinner with him and Dr. Light, who are, both these guys are like 60 years old. And I'm sitting there looking around and, and with all of our, with us three and our wives. And I'm like, why? Like, why am I, I belong at that table? And I think about that every time I'm around people like that, achievers. And the answer is it always because I invest in myself. Not only do I realize what happens, there's something special that happens when you invest in yourself. It's kind of like tithing. When you tithe, there's something special that happens around tithing. Same thing with investing in yourself. When so, it's kind of like when the teacher or when the student is ready, the what? The teacher appears. That's how it works. When you say, I'm buying the book, then you receive what it is that you want. Because why? The finding is reserved for the seekers. I want you guys to be a room full of, full of seekers. Seek, seek, seek. Find, find, find. As, and then we're going to go out and apply these things, and I'm going to help you become a lot better at applying these things. But if you're applying them and you're experiencing them, you're ex the results that you will get bought and ship a suitcase home. If you guys saw my library, it would impress you because I buy everything when it comes to personal investment. I've, I have over 1,200 books that I've bought. I, built, I came to Dallas with one book because my mentors have always ingrained that in me. Invest in yourself, buy the books, have the coaches, have the mentors. And I always have mentors in my life. I have the best mentors, the best. These people are amazing. And I'm like, why do they come to me? My question is, is do you have a mentor? Do you have a mentor and do you attract those people in your life that want to pour into you? They see something in you and they are attracted to you and they just want to invest. In you. And it's a special relationship, is it not? Who in here has a mentor like that? Is it special? It's so special. But here's the thing. These people don't come into your life if you're not learning based. Because for the, that person to appear, you have to be ready. And those people come into your life when you're learning based, when you're learning, when you're seeking. That's part of taking the step and not needing all the answers. Okay? So what's your next step? What is your next step? And I'm going to, we have pizza too. You all feed them twice. Like, this is like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm just going to just come work here and just eat for eat good every day. All right, so here's what we want, though. We got to know what our model is. I have 15 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up, and I have a lot to cover. Who's your model? Here's what I want you to get in the habit of doing. Oh, I'm frustrated. What do I do? Why? How? When? Step back. Who's your model? To step back from that situation and go, who's my model? What am I modeling? I'll give you an example. You gotta model everything. I'm getting, I'm having a, a, a seminar, I, I have recharge conference. By the way, you guys are gonna know about No Limits, which is November, I'm sorry, March 8th and 9th. It's my three day conference in Dallas. We're gonna have 300 agents from all over the country come. It's at Bent Tree Country Club. You guys mark your calendars, you're gonna wanna be there. It's an incredible event. And I, I've done recharge every year. 
And I'm like, I'm going to close the bar down. And they're like, well, what do you mean close the bar? I said, well, in marketing, you want to close the bar. Like, you know, you ever go to a, you know, I don't go to bars anymore, but like, if, let's say if you're on a bar on Greenville Avenue, you see that bar that's been open for a decade. Well, you go down there one week and it closes down. And then you go, you're like, that was good. Tony Robbins says, if you want to be successful, find somebody who's achieved the results you want, copy what they do, and you'll achieve the same results. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, folks. All we want you to do is you just duplicate. Take what we give you and go do it. All I'm going to be when I open my mouth here with Jay Parr is this, is hopefully a model. Everything I give you is a model, a model, a model, a model. I don't give you bad models. So take whatever model you want and go apply it, but that's what I do is I'm going to give you guys the models. So models come in different forms, coaches and mentors. Every one of you needs a coach and a mentor. Everybody does. You need products and training. You need audio and books. And you also need mastermind groups. That's the difference in models. And here's why this is important in real estate. Because you learn.